The Caravan Channel. Sponsored by Adrian Flux Insurance. Welcome back to the Caravan Channel and this our sixth summer special. We're concentrating on families in this show and before you and I both had a break I showed you a trio of really great family vans. But there's not much point in having a multi-berth van if you've only got four seats in your tow car. Well our David Motten has taken a look at several great seven-seater tow cars over the past 12 months including the Citroen C4 Picasso. This is the Citroen Grand C4 Picasso. The grand part of the name means there's extra cabin space compared with the C4 Picasso and a third row of seats. It's certainly a very practical MPV, but how does it stack up as a tow car? The short answer is very well. Although it's a relatively lightweight car, which means you need to take care matching the Citroen to a caravan. Even including 75 kilograms for the driver, the Citroen only weighs 1,505 kilograms. That's not very much for a big seven-seat MPV. However, we wouldn't hesitate to tow more than the 85% match figure of 1,279 kilograms, provided you consider yourself to be an experienced tow car driver. We towed a Bailey Unicorn 2 Cadiz with a mass in running order of 1,344 kilos. That's an 89% match for the Citroen. However, the two litre diesel engine proved up to the job thanks to its 273 pounds-feet of torque. Despite having so much weight to pull, the Grand C4 Picasso towed from 30 to 60 miles per hour in a respectable 13 seconds. As well as delivering a reasonable turn of speed, the Citroen makes a very stable tow car. Despite being quite a tall vehicle, it doesn't get blown around by crosswinds and it's a relaxing car to drive at the legal limit. While we're impressed with the Picasso's towing ability, it's the Citroen's interior which is its standout feature. Those in the front and middle rows have plenty of room to stretch out and the third row has just about enough space for short trips. The cabin is full of clever thinking and family friendly touches. There are air vents for the second and the third rows. There's underfloor storage. And there's this handy extra mirror for keeping an eye on the kids. We're not so sure about the touch screen though. It makes for a clean and uncluttered dashboard, but it does take a bit of getting used to. Provided you save the third row for occasional use, there's plenty of room for everyone's bags. In fact, there's between 632 and 793 litres of space depending on the position of the middle row of seats. With the second row folded away, there's a massive 2,181 litres to fill. So far so good, but we do have a couple of reservations about the Citroen. The nose weight limit is just 70 kilos, and if you load the car to the gross vehicle weight, the 1,700 kilogram towing limit effectively drops to just 1,400 kilograms. The towing limit may be confusing, but in other respects, the Grand C4 Picasso is very impressive. It's stable at speed, the engine is strong, and it has a practical seven-seat cabin. All in all, this is a great family tow car. There's no doubt that the Grand C4 Picasso is a fine piece of kit, but even the cheapest versions weigh in at nearly 20,000 pounds. What if you want a more affordable alternative? Well, luckily, our Motti got his hands on a Kia Karens a short while before he tested the big Citroen. It also offers seven seats, but for quite a few dollars less. Kia has long been a popular brand with caravanners, in particular for its 4x4s, but the brand's MPVs are also well worth a look. Take this, the latest Kia Karen 7-seater. Diesel versions are powered by a 1.7-litre engine, but don't let the small capacity fool you. It may be a bit flat at low revs, but with 244 pounds-feet of torque, it has plenty of mid-range muscle. Towing a Swift Expression 514 with a mass in running order of 1256 kilograms, the Karens pulled from 30 to 60 miles per hour in a respectable 16.2 seconds. 
Once up to motorway speeds, the Cairns feels reasonably stable, although more firmly controlled suspension would be welcome on bumpy roads. The Comfort First setup does the Kia no favours in an emergency manoeuvre. Ask the Cairns to change direction in a hurry and there's limited grip and lots of lean. The driver can feel the caravan pushing and shoving at the back of the car, but we never felt the caravan was about to take charge. If you need to stop rather than swerve, we've also towed with better MPVs. In normal towing, the Kia's brakes feel reasonably responsive and easy to apply smoothly, but at the test track in our emergency stop manoeuvre, the Kia needed a disappointing 11.5 metres to stop the car and caravan. Inside, this is a very clever and flexible MPV. There are seven seats and as with most rivals, the third row is rather tight for space, but there's plenty of room in the middle row of seats and lots of space for the driver and front seat passenger. Luggage space is tight with all the seats upright, but as a five-seater there's a healthy 492 litres to fill. Fold the seats down and that rises to an impressive 1,650 litres. One thing I'm not wild about with the Cairns is the positioning of the towing electrics. They're a very long way under the bumper. It's fine if you've got telescopic arms, but for the rest of us it does make attaching the electrics rather fiddly. That's a niggle rather than a major failing and something you may be happy to put up with for the Kia's practicality and safety. The car has a five-star crash test rating from the experts at Euro NCAP and a comprehensive list of safety equipment. Judged purely as a tow car, the Kia is solid rather than outstanding, but it has other strengths. A seven-year warranty makes it a sound buy, and the roomy and flexible interior means this is a very practical family MPV. I love caravanning with my kids, but unfortunately accidents can and often do happen. And as anyone who's ever tried to replace their van's upholstery will know, it's a seriously expensive process. Fortunately, here's our John Wickersham with a guide to getting stubborn stains out of your van's upholstery after those unfortunate incidents. Now, we're looking at uh, upholstery, but it's a very seasonal industry, this, and therefore I'm not going to talk about things like getting covers made if you've got sticky fingered children or if you've got dogs and you want an extra cover or perhaps that you've lost the resilience. Now I'm not saying goodbye at this moment because I'm going to look at the present and imagine that you've had a bit of an accident and you've got a stain or you've dropped something on it. It's a good idea to have a little kit of um, proprietary products. A general purpose one for instance or maybe a specific one that uh, in this case is one for tea, um, wine and fruit juice. But you can also do quite a lot just by creating your own kit. I give instructions for dealing with a beer stain if you've been silly enough to spill this thing. Or maybe you've uh, got red wine and people do spill that as well. And it's interesting that one of the products you can use is a mix of water and white vinegar. But I'm pleased to, f to learn that you can also get out red wine stains if you've got lemons. Now, I hadn't got a lemon at home, but we have got pure lemon juice. And you mix the lemon with salt and you make up a little mixture and you apply it to the stained area as soon as possible. And having done that initially, you clean that off with a little water, not too much, and you then apply a paste which is using, and this is my kind of little um, very, very miniature washing powder, and you mix this up into a very, very stiff paste, and you smear that over the afflicted area. And when it's dry, after 30 minutes, you brush it off but you mustn't have a brush that's too stiff, otherwise you'll cause damage. Just a kind of a dabbing action. Mmm, marmalade, lovely. Oops, slipped on there. Oh, that's a bit, oh dear, that's a bit of a nuisance. And there it is, Mr. Cameraman, look at that. Stage one, we've got to clear it off quickly. Have in your kit 
a nice rounded knife and gently bring that off. And then apply some water spray. Another thing that um, is also important, um, when you're cleaning off, never use a coloured rag. Oh, sorry. <laughs> never use a coloured rag because the dye from the rag suddenly gets sucked up into the fabric you're trying to clean. And don't forget to keep smiling and try not to spill the wine and chocolate, which I explain how to deal with that, put it in a safe place. It's called the human mouth. Sadly, that brings us to the end of another show, but I do hope you've enjoyed our celebration of family caravanning. After all, having fun with the family is the main reason many of us got into the hobby in the first place. We'll be back very soon, but in the meantime, you can keep up with us on Facebook or via our website, and don't forget that the Motorhome channel follows in just a few minutes. Until next time, bye-bye. Adrian Flux Insurance, proud sponsors of The Caravan Channel.